Hello everybody, this is General Yanis and today in Death Car Tactics I'm looking at the Grand Tournament 2021, the chapter approved, the new mission pack and the new uh, secondary objectives that have been uh, updated. So I found some rules uh, on the forums and I'm reviewing the changes uh, for these secondaries and um, how they can uh, impact uh, Death Card and um, what to consider here. So let's uh, get started. So today, the 9th of June 2021, um, Happily, I have arranged for a 2,000 point game tomorrow, uh, and <laughs> the, the bad news is versus Salamanders and a very uh, strong anti-death card army with a lot of Meltas and Plasmas. So, uh, in, in all fairness, not the best matchup to bring Mortarion, but uh, the Demon Primark, uh, Primark uh, in my cabinet uh, insists and demands a fielding in 2021. Uh, hopefully, uh, my new Contemptor Dread that will be uh, also joining the battle for the first time uh, in my in my army uh, will uh, make an impact. So let's see how that will go, and hopefully, I can make a post-battle an analysis um, and and hopefully survive the the, the meeting with uh, these uh, Salamander guys. Uh, but uh, today, as I said, I will be reviewing the chapter approved, the Grand Tournament 2021, and changes to the secondaries and uh, how it. Um, how it fits basically for Death Guard. So I'm reviewing the various secondaries and comparing to the changes to the Grand Tournament 2020. So let's uh, get started. So if we start with the Purge the Enemy category, uh, here we have the Assassination or Assassinate. Uh, this uh, gives us three victory points for each enemy character model destroyed. And the new addition in 2021 is that we also get an additional victory point for, for killing the Warlord. Uh, so it's basically a nice bonus if you're going for the assassination to take out an enemy with a lot of characters. Uh, you would be, and if you kill the warlord, you get one victory point more. So uh, a bit better than than the than the current version of assassinate. Uh, bring it down has been unchanged. Uh, the bring it down, of course, is victory points for destroying enemy vehicles and monsters, and in the uh, in the uh, GT 2020 uh, for for vehicles between one and ten wounds you get one victory point from 11 to 19 two victory points and from 20 or more victory uh, wounds you get three victory points for each kill so this is uh, stays the same as Grand Tournament 2020 Titan Hunter has been updated uh, so here you still get victory points for destroying Titanic models but it's a big reduction in the points uh, if you only destroy one or two titanic models from the enemy. Previously, we would be scoring 10, 12, and 15 victory points for one, two, three uh, killed uh, titanic models. Now you will be scoring four, nine, and 15. So definitely um, a, a re reduction of the utility. But again, the Titan Hunter uh, is more, uh, it's, it's already a niche choice if you're facing uh, a, a knights uh, as opponents. Moving over to the No Mercy No Respite category, uh, here we have some uh, some good uh, choices. Um, the, and uh, the, the one that was basically never selected or very uh, unlikely to be used was Thin the Ranks. Now this has been replaced by the No Prisoners and I've made already a video when uh, Warhammer Community made a preview of this rule. Uh, so the rule here is that you keep a kill point tally and every time you kill and uh, destroy an enemy model and uh, now this is the new thing that it's not a vehicle monster or character you add the kill points equal to the wound characteristic to the tally so if you kill an enemy uh, model that's not a vehicle uh, for example a bike with four wounds that will give you a tally of four if you kill a terminator you might get two wounds you know two wound model two victory two kill points etc and resurrected models can count again if destroyed again. And at the end of the battle, you divide uh, the, kill, the total kill points by 10 and round down um, the number of victory points. So this, uh, as I reviewed in my uh, in my um, uh, when in the reveal of the no prisoners, makes it quite interesting choice against uh, infantry elite infantry heavy uh, armies like space marines and custodes with two and three wound models. You could maybe quickly. Uh, build up a kill point tally here and before it was only one one point for one kill point for for each infantry model uh, grind them down is unchanged three victory points for every battle round if uh, more enemy units are killed than friendly units so no changes here 
and then uh, to the last uh, replaces the while we start with fight a very popular choice for death guard uh, so the this is a minor change for us uh, so we define the three units in our army with the highest point cost and we get five victory points for each of those units that survive the battle and the the new thing to do the last is if if one of these units is later split into several smaller one except drones uh, if all all the units that it's split to survive you get the five victory points but if only some survive you get three victory points instead today for example if you had an opponent and they had a big uh, chunk of uh, of infantry divided into two smaller if you only kill one of those then the opponent would still score the five points but we don't have so many rules uh, for death card that allow us to split units to smaller ones uh, during the game and here we have the Death Guard specific fleeing vector secondary in this category, uh, where it's uh, morale based and uh, typically not so often selected. In the battlefield supremacy category, here are also some interesting choices. Engage on all fronts, uh, a popular choice in general for Warhammer 40k game. Uh, this has been unchanged. Uh, two victory points at the end of each turn if you have uh, units wholly within three quadrants three quarters of the table and three victory points uh, if you have them in four quarters not uh, and every of those have to be not uh, within six inch of the center behind enemy lines this replaces line breaker um, this gives us four victory points at the end of the turn if two units or more are within the enemy deployment zone this was the previous uh, wording of the line breaker but the behind enemy lines now adds that you get two victory points if one unit is wholly within enemy deployment zone so more granular uh, if you, you only have one you still score some points the other one required two or more units to score you four you can still get the four but you all can also get two victory points so of course a better utility for this one and um, if you were taking it before it's it's as as good and better now that you can also score half points let's say stranglehold replaces domination uh, previously uh, you, domination will be giving you three victory points at the end of your turn if you control more than half of the total objective markers this has now been replaced it's still at the end of your turn it's still three victory points but now you have to control more than uh, let's say three objectives or more and more than your opponent uh, so uh, so it could be easier for some some maps but it could be also more difficult for some maps if for example there are only four objectives uh, but of course if there are only four objectives and you hold three yeah, you hold more than half so it's a bit um, yeah for some apps uh, it could be better and and for some it could be more difficult here in this category we have the despoiled ground death card specific secondary that is not changed of course in our codex looking at the warpcraft category that has it's a, has been quite problematic let's say to to use in match play uh, a lot uh, we have some uh, changes here the psychic interrogation replaces the mental interrogation here you get uh, still three victory points every time a special psychic action is performed and this psychic action uh, the update here it's a warp four action for a psychic character uh, must target uh, a visible now now the, the the character we are selecting to interrogate must be visible but can be within 24 inch of the psyker and not 18 inch. Uh, and uh, so we get an improvement in range for this one, but it must be visible. So all in all, maybe it's not really uh, <laughs> improved. And um, the problem with this is in general with actions, uh, we cannot have the psyker do other psychic spells. And that's probably why we take the psyker. Uh, the warp ritual. Uh, another Warcraft action here replaces the Psychic Ritual and this has been um, improved, let's say. Previously it was all or nothing, you would be getting 15 victory points if a special Psychic action has been succeeded three times with the same unit. Uh, but now um, you tally the, uh, the amount of actions one Psyker can attempt per turn and you have to be within 6 inch or within the battlefield center. And at the end of the battle, you score according to the tally. So if you do this um, one time, three victory points, two times uh, seven victory points, and three or more times 12 victory points, uh, so you don't score, it's not all or nothing, and you can have several psychers contributing to this one, but you have to be uh, close to the center, and psychic um, uh, actions can be denied if the enemy has uh, psychers. Pierce the Veil has been unchanged. 
again a cycle action uh, this is eight victory points if you succeed with the action two times 15 victory points if you succeed with the action four times and this it has to be within six inch within the opponent's battlefield edge and six away six inch away from enemy models so quite difficult to pull uh, to pull uh, to pull through with this abhor the witch is unchanged uh, this is three victory points for each destroyed psyker character and two victory points for each psyker unit destroyed from the enemy but you can only select this if you don't have psychers in your own army and typically for death card most of the list would have at least one psyker uh, in them so this is basically not not an option for us in normal uh, lists Shadow operations here, so this category uh, also ones that require actions, uh, raise the banners high, unchanged from 2020, so one victory points at the end of each turn uh, and at the end of the battle for every ob objective marker where we have put a banner on, and uh, we can use the raise banner action one or more infantry unit, and of course for death card not poxwalkers, uh, within the objective marker at the end of the movement, and they cannot be enemies nearby. Uh, no other action on the end of on turn and the banners are taken down if the enemy controls objectives so here we can put banners on objectives uh, scoring us uh, cumulative victory points uh, investigate signal has been um, is replacing investigate sites and this has been easier to perform still three victory points when investigate action is successfully performed and the action itself the conditions are changed so one infantry unit not character and not pox workers for death card of course at the end of movement has to be within six inches of the center previously no enemy units had to be within the six inch of the center but uh, it's now complete at the end of own turn if no enemy units are within six inches of center so the difference here is that we get a complete turn to try to remove something in the center preventing us from uh, doing this this action uh, of course the center might not be the the place we want to be there are typically not so many objectives in the center in the most missions uh, but here, at least this uh, becomes a bit more interesting than, than previously. Deploy teleport homers, uh, repa replaces the repair teleport homer. Previously, we get five victory points uh, each time the action was successfully performed. And it was a difficult action because it had to be wholly within the opponent deployment zone. Now we are getting two victory points uh, each time the action is completed and four victory points if the action is completed wholly within the opponent deployment zone. The action is one infantry or biker unit can perform this action if it's fully within 12 inch of the enemy deployment zone now previously it had to be within the uh, fully within the enemy deployment zone and the action is completed at the next uh, command phase if the unit is still wholly within the 12 inch uh, of the enemy deployment zone so it's a bit difficult action because the enemy uh, has a whole turn to uh, deal with these units performing this action but now it could be let's say from the center and up of the of the map uh, it can it can still obtain a bit, a bit victory points retrieve octarius data replaces the popular deploy scramblers uh, this deploy scramblers was an all or nothing 10 victory points uh, and it had to be uh, the action had to be done in the deployment zone own deployment zone the opponent deployment zone in between them in the middle uh, now uh, one infantry unit uh, not a character or not box workers of course can perform this action at the end of the movement phase if they are wholly within a table quarter where this action has not been performed yet and more than six inches away from any other quarter the action is completed at the end of the own turn so this is quite good of course uh, and the end of the game scores according to the number of successful actions for example if we did it for two quarters four victory points three quarters uh, table quarters eight victory points and the four uh, quadrants quarters here 12 victory points so you can score more than previously but instead of doing it three times now you have to get three quarters but even if you don't succeed with all of them you can still score some victory points so again moving away from an all or nothing type of approach and here of course we have the death card specific spread the sickness where we can contaminate objectives and this is the only action our pox walkers uh, can perform so this is quite a popular choice, especially if there are plenty of objectives on and on the mission uh, competing with some of these uh, these actions here. So summary of the changes and uh, thinking a bit about death card implications. Uh, no prisoners uh, replacing the thin the ranks uh, can make it an interesting choice versus elite infantry opponents with multiple wounds like the Space Marines, Custodes, etc. 
and this I've covered in my in my previous uh, video about the no prisoners changes. Um, however, it's also a good choice against death card terminator heavy list with like the terminus uh, assault force assassination. Is a bit stronger now you just get one more victory point for killing the enemy warlord uh, on top of three victory points for the characters to the last uh, the previously while we stand we fight uh, the changes there are minor and don't impact the death card and as we don't have any units that split in command squad so still a good choice for for death card many secondaries have been moving away from all or nothing type, which always was a bit uh, risky to take, that you had a, a chance to score quite a lot of points, but if you failed a little bit, you get zero, and that, of course, wasn't very good. Uh, and now it's more a granular scoring, which makes them typically better to consider. Um, behind enemy lines is better than the line breaker, the warp ritual is better than the psychic ritual, and retrieve Octarius data could be uh, better than the deploy scrambler. So some some of the choices maybe we would not i was personally would not look so much uh, on maybe they are more interesting now investigate signal in the center is easier to do with the rule changes the stranglehold the new rules for domination depends basically on the number of objectives it could be it could be good but it might also be similar or not so much better the psychic interrogation is a bit mixed replacing the mental interrogation you get a 24 inch range for the action but the opponent character must be visible uh, some of the secondaries have been reduced uh, let's say the titan hunter gives uh, considerably less victory points against the titanic models so the final thoughts um, i think overall I, th I think it's some good changes uh, it seems that more secondaries are worth considering than previously for example the no prisoners uh, replacing the thin the ranks which was practically a joke for for most uh, opponents uh, lots of the already good choices and and some of the ones that have a good fit with death card are mostly unchanged the the new while we stand we fight they grind them down and the death, death card specific of course uh, missions have not been changed engage all fronts it's a universally good one and hasn't been changed and uh, i think it's quite clear from the changes that effort has been made to modify action related secondaries to be more interesting and a bit more granular uh, as death card it can be quite tricky to do especially since our cheap infantry poxwalkers cannot do action other than spread the sickness. We don't have stratagems, let's say, that allows us, allows some of our more elite infantry to do the, the actions and, uh, and, and still, for example, shoot or something like that. Uh, so, but of course we could use cultists for this, uh, but then they don't have objective secure and, and other, other uh, problems. But I think all in all, uh, some decent changes, some interesting changes, um, and um, will probably make a bit more uh, more options of secondaries more worthwhile so uh, what do you think about the changes uh, have you found any big uh, changes some that sounds uh, like uh, it could be very useful for you and some that you haven't considered before but you're not considering using please leave some comments below uh, so um, this concludes the video. If you like this video, please press like and subscribe to my channel where I will be, uh, where I will be posting more Death Card Tactics videos. Uh, if you want to support my channel and my efforts more, please visit my Patreon page, uh, patreon.com General Yanis. Uh, I would highly appreciate your effort and you can be part of the roadmap and come with wishes for next videos there. And uh, with these words, uh, General Yanis is signing out. Stay safe out there and bye-bye.